This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we recap the first football game of the Malik Hall era at Bates. Plus, the cross-country teams challenged Tufts at Pineland Farms, and the women's soccer team ended the week on a high note. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The Bates football team went toe-to-toe with Amherst Saturday in the Bobcats' season opener. The game stood scoreless at halftime, but the Mammoth scored twice to go up 13-0 entering the fourth quarter. Then the Bobcats struck back. Senior defensive lineman Walter Washington recovered a fumble, and sophomore quarterback Brendan Costa did the rest. Costa looks, pumps, runs up the middle. He's got the first. He's going for the end zone. He is at the pylon. He is in. Touchdown, Brendan Costa. On the keeper from 26 yards away, he puts Bates on the board with 7.23 to go. It's 13-6 pending the PAT. Costa's 26-yard touchdown run cut the Bates deficit to just six after the extra point. But Amherst drove down the field on their next drive to get a big insurance score, going up 19-7. That's how the game would end, despite the Bobcats winning the turnover battle by a count of 3-1. to one. First-year head coach Malik Hall looks back at the first game of the season. I'm curious from a personal perspective, this is your first game ever as a head coach. Running out into that field, what was going through your mind? Man, I, I, you know, I got to tell you, when we had the smoke going and the music and we started rocking, you almost found, I almost felt like it was an outer body experience to where it was like, wow, we're actually here. I'm actually a head coach of a program of guys that I want to be around, administrators who support the program, faculty members who support the program. You know, when you take a step back, which it didn't happen for me until Monday, excuse me, Saturday, roughly around maybe midnight, where I'm like, wow, where I finally had an opportunity to not exhale but decompress on what took place, shrink everything and see it from a from a bird's eye view, if you will. And it was just, I, I, it was very surreal. Um, looking at it, it was like I was replaying uh, a movie. Yeah. And it was like, wow, like I'm actually the star role in this movie. Um, and it's somewhat still unbelievable because, you know, when I even saw the, the media guide or the game day guide, I'm like, man, I, I'd rather the players have been on it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's, it's humbling because um, – it says everything about what the school feels and what the community feels that I was the guy for the job. So um, us not getting it done is just another reason on why we show up every day at 6 a.m. to kind of get ahead of the curve for our players and, and for the alum who who have a, a bobcat hunger about them. Defensively, you're a defensive guy. Bowman had that sack. Uh, he's a first year. He looked really good out there, didn't he? Man, like, you know, Magic Mike, as we like to call him, <laughs> he he put on a magic show for a freshman to be out there, a first year to be out there. He didn't take one break. Uh, his endurance is certainly um, something to marvel at for every guy in our program to kind of say, man, freshman. Didn't take one playoff, didn't get one blow. I'm sure he has some mistakes to go along with it, uh, but there is no mistake-free game in football. Um, so I was proud of him more more than I can express in words, and I think our team was because the team had to depend on a first year to play at that high level. He didn't know what the speed of the game was going to look like, didn't know how physical the game was going to be. Uh, and I think he played as good as anyone. You know, uh, 
and I'm super happy for him. And more than anything, I'm sure our players are happy for him because that's one guy that they know they can depend on that they have no other history with them other than this past weekend. Uh, obviously, the, the safety situation, you know, Lindgren played the whole game, led the team in tackles. You were without Frank. You lost your backup halfway through. But Anthony Costa stepped up. You showed some depth there in the secondary, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Costa, man, AC has been great in camp. You know, um, Hunt was awesome, yeah, by the way. Was great. Yeah. You know, our safety situation, we've been very – the football guy smiled on us with that because – I look at it like we have six safeties, two who are lights out. Yeah. Lingren, who is a player, Frank, who's a player, and Frank goes down. Yeah. Lingren, who took that emotionally as best as I think he could have taken it for guys to play together for as long as they have, and they finally have opportunity to make the rights wrong this year. Um, I think he showed up for Frank. Um, but Frank is our emotional leader, and I think whenever you don't have that guy on the field, it's going to be a little juice that you know he could bring to the party that unfortunately just won't be there. Uh, but AC, who stepped up after Hunt got hurt, Hunt stepped up as a starter after Frank got hurt. We don't talk about injury because injury is a part of the game. Like, we don't talk about referee calls. It's a part of the game. You have to be able to absorb the things that happen in this game to become great. Uh, so we haven't addressed injury from a big picture standpoint other than, hey, next guy up. Not because we don't know how value, valuable it is to, to have your starters in the game, but by putting more value on them being hurt takes value away from the guy who has to replace him. So we, we try to live in the now and um, acknowledge the now or the past or the future, but let's live in the now because that way our energy will never be misplaced. Uh, Brendan Costa, the, uh, the quarterback, um, you know, he ran for a touchdown. That was kind of kind of a vintage of what we saw last year, the CBB in particular. Uh, what do you think of his game? Obviously, you know, you guys threw it maybe not as much as you were planning to. I'm not sure in terms of how the game plan went, but what were your thoughts on Brendan? I think Brendan's a playmaker. I think, you know, um, once we, you know, offense is more to do with timing than it has to do with anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think once we started to get our timing together, uh, we had an unfortunate injury on Amherst's team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one, you don't want a pause in the game that long on offense because it, it's timing and rhythm more than anything to have it be such a, a horrific injury. Uh, so I think adding that, adding that, adding the injury, losing the rhythm and our timing, adding to this is a new debut for everyone on that offense, we thought it'd be best to slowly – <clears throat> slowly allow them to let the offense come to them. Mm -hmm. And you have an offensive line who's gone from running the ball 40 times a game to now all of a sudden say they're going to protect for 40. I, I, mm -hmm. I, like we would love that. Right. And I think the hype behind it um, presented that to a degree. But from a coaching and X's and O's standpoint, um, Amherst is too good of a team to give them confidence because we're trying to throw it over the lot and they turn it into bad turnovers. Uh, because fatigue and depth became an issue, I think Coach Patterson did a great job just identifying, listen, they're punting the ball and we're punting the ball. And if we're both punting the ball, then something has to happen to break the game open. Unfortunately, it happened on our end. Um, and, and I think, you know, Kasi is a dynamic kid and I think he tried to put it all on his shoulders. Mm. I think there's a time and a place for quarterbacks to do that. Um, I don't know that that time and place would have presented itself anywhere in the first half, considering it was a brand new offense, brand new coordinator, brand new coaches, brand new coaching staff. Everything was brand new. And when everything's brand new, you tend to sh 
you you would like to think that people allow the system to work them in. Um, just like new employees, hey, let's just follow the system. It'll take you to the next phase of everything. Before then, like, before you go rogue and create your own system and make your own plays, and rogue would be a, a, a strange answer or a statement, but you have to be clear on what the system can do for you yeah. before you can say, what can I do for the system? And I think across the board, uh, we had a hard time letting the system work for our, for our players. Our players were trying to do everything to make the system work for them. So it is kind of a gradual implementation of it, isn't it? Because you mentioned the offensive line. It's a whole new scheme for them, really. Too. Yeah, I, I imagine that <laughs> the easiest way to allow the line to to acclimate themselves is to not allow them to be kick sliding the first 15, 20 snaps. Yeah. Second, they haven't had to do that. You got to understand, our entire offense in 20 days – we restructured from wide receivers maybe catching four balls, 10 targets a game, to us trying to target 22 times. Yeah. Like, some of that, we've already broke that record. <laughs> like, our tight end's most receptions in a game was four. Like, he set his own record Saturday. So, I, I think just understanding that that progress that we're looking for is different from the process in which we have to get to um, to get the progress that we have four or five hundred yard passing yard games. Um, our quarterback has to trust our O line. Our O line has to trust the protection in the scheme. The receiver has to have to trust the timing of our quarterback and the routes in the scheme. Uh, There's a lot of pieces in that, man. And like the goal is to try to win the game, not to create stats. Yeah that only inevitably make the defense go on the field a little bit more and gets the game further and further away from you so you can compete in the fourth quarter. Now, I know you only you try to focus on Bates, but Amherst and Trinity, uh, opening the year with the two top teams from last year of the conference, I mean, that's not exactly a soft landing for the guys, is it? <laughs> you know, listen, it's hard to win. And what better way to prove that by going to compete with the top, top dogs of the league? Um, because my thing is to be, to be great, you have to be good. And if those are the, if that's the good of our league or the great of our league, then we have to be better than just good. We have to be better than, Hey, we were close today. Right. We have to be to the point where we were close and we had them and we didn't make the play. Um, right now, we weren't in that space this this past weekend. We were close, but mm -hmm. it never came down to what play we didn't make. Right. Um, this weekend, we hope that it does. Um, the goal is the same. Play hard for four quarters. Let's get the game in the fourth quarter and find out how good they are. And um, if we can, to be good so we can be great on that individual day. But it's going to be a task that will be a handful. This week in practice, points of emphasis you're going to be relaying to the team. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> it's about us. Every every week is about us. The opponent happens to wear a different color. They have a different name, all of that. So the emphasis is, again, how hard can we play? What level of execution can we bring to our effort? And do we have the right attitude throughout this whole game? We didn't get any personal fouls. That's attitude driven. Mm -hmm. um, we did have penalties, but personal fouls is all about attitude. Did they get in your head? Did you make a decision that was not best for the team that you thought was best for you emotionally? And, and I think if we can control those components, we can eventually coach up the, the piece of the game that will turn it into a W. But they have to get be comfortable one being in these positions. Um, it's chestnut checkers, right? Just because we can throw the ball doesn't mean we throw it. If getting us in the fourth quarter is to run the ball, we run the ball. If getting us in the fourth quarter is to throw it, we throw it. If it's to blitz, we'll blitz. If it's to play coverage, we'll play coverage. The objective is to get them in position 
so they can access their skills and their talents in the fourth quarter to go win a game. We cannot have any disruptions throughout the week because if we do, it sets you back. We have four practices, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have four quarters. Mm -hmm. So if we stumble on a Tuesday, that's quarter one. That's quarter one. And, and unfortunately, by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, we're more reeling in game plan yeah. to get ready for Saturday. So, uh, uh, you know, not to understate or overstate, you know, what you do early can affect you late. But where you start is certainly not where you finish. And we want to have a, a nice, fluid understanding of both both concepts so we can understand that if we get a rough start, we got to have a very strong finish. And if we have a strong start, that doesn't mean to have a weak finish. Yeah. Um, and, and unfortunately, the football game is like Dow Jones, up, down, up, down. And that Dow Jones, we have to be steady at him. Coach Hall, thanks so much. Thank you for having me once again. What a day to be a Bobcat. The volleyball team defeated Southern Maine 3 to nothing on Tuesday before dropping matches to Tufts on Friday and Bowdoin on Saturday. Meanwhile, the men's soccer team defeated the University of New England 2-0 on Tuesday before falling to number three nationally ranked Tufts in overtime by a count of 1-0 on Saturday. After dropping a pair of matches to Bowdoin and Tufts respectively, the Bates women's soccer team bounced back to defeat Babson 3-1 on Sunday. Sophomore So Kim scored a pair of goals, and senior Olivia Amder dished out a pair of assists in the win. We've got two outside midfielders joining us on the Bobcast, talk some Bates women's soccer. So Kim, a sophomore, and senior Olivia Amder. And obviously you're, you're two are joining us because you were the connection that, that worked really well Sunday against Babson. First of all, Olivia, this is a new role for you in the midfield. You were forward the past three years. What's the adjustment been like? Yeah, it's definitely been different. I've played a 4-3-3 for as long as I can remember. So having a 3-5-2 formation has been a different role. Um, it's definitely tested my knowledge of the game. It's tested my physical ability. It's definitely different, but I think with time, I'm enjoying it more and more as the time goes on. <laughs> and then, so this is a great role for you because you're a track star also. You're fast. I mean, that speed is your main part of your game, right? Yes, definitely. So definitely the speed does help, just like running all the way back defense and when we're attacking, just being up there, supporting the forwards. So definitely speed and endurance is a big part of this position. So that's been a lot of work, but as Olivia says, it's been great adjusting about it and... Yeah. Excellent. Well, Olivia, those two crosses you made were just, I mean, spectacular. Take us through both of them. The second one in particular, I thought, right from the goal line all the way to the far mm -hmm. post. Yeah, so I, crossing is kind of my thing once in a while. I have a left foot, which is kind of unlike most people on our team. I think there's only two other lefties, so it's nice having that. Um, yeah, I just look to cross. I know my teammates are always going to be in the box. It's something we stress as a team is getting everyone forward. So when we have those attacks right by the goal front, we have as many people in there as possible to get as, as close to a goal or shots, as many shots as we can. So I just have a lot of trust in my team that they will be there. I don't think twice about it. I know someone will be there to get the end of that ball. Yeah. And on the second cross, the one that you headed in, what, what was your thoughts as balls in the air? Like, oh, this is coming right at me? <laughs> Yeah, so definitely, like, in the second half, like, as a team, we talked about, yes, like, um, all our forwards have to be in the box, especially that far post, because when Liv gets across in, it will get there. So definitely that was an adjustment that, as an outside forward, I had to make. And so um, when Liv had that great cross, I was like, okay, I got to <laughs> go to that far post. And, yes, it, like, literally came right in my head. I was like, okay, I can't miss it. So... <laughs> Use my head right there and yeah, it went in. So from a strategic standpoint, this new formation you talked, you touched on the two forwards, the five mid midfielders, the three backs. What does that bring to the table for the team as a whole in terms of a different approach to the game? Yeah, we really have to stress working together. No matter if we're on the defense or the attack, we need everyone in our formation defending as a team, and we also need to get as many numbers as we can attacking as a team. Um, because so many of us are pushed back towards that defensive role because there are only three back there, we have really been focusing on holding the ball and not just kind of kicking and running. So it's definitely a different game than we've played in years past. It's a lot harder. Um, Kelsey's really testing our ability, but I know she has faith in us as we have faith in each other too. Terrific. Well, so you're from Canada, from Ontario. So what attracted you to come to school here in Lewiston to, to base? Uh, well, I did. I went to a sports high school in Toronto for two years, and then I went to a boarding school in Connecticut. And so I knew I wanted to go to school in the States. 
But what attracted me to, I guess, Bates in general was just, like, the community, definitely. Because um, one thing that actually stood out was, like, during my admissions tour, my tour guide, like, was wearing no shoes. And so for me, that was like, wow, like, you can do that type of thing and no one's no one's going to judge you. And for me, wow, like, definitely Bates is a place where I can open up, um, step out of my comfort zone and... I know there's going to be people there that's going to support me, and definitely the soccer team has been there supporting every step of the way, especially with my transition last year, too. And so, yeah. What's it been like playing soccer and running track? Because it's been done before. I know Allie Hill did it, but what's it been like for you? It's definitely kept me in shape, yeah. for sure, because <laughs> I'm in season all year, yeah. so that just motivates me just to, like, just keep going. And it is definitely hard not... It's hard, um, especially just coming off of soccer, like, and then just transitioning into that just track mindset is just, that is also very, very hard to do. But again, I have like the support from both teams that, and that really, really helps. Same with like Coach Jay, it helps me out with that too. Same with Kelsey. And so, um, yeah, it definitely does test my ability and everything, but it's definitely worth all that because I have the support of people around me and um, and the coaches too so and is, you're, a, you're a sprinter in track is that I'm a middle distance middle so distance I okay. run from the 400 to the 15 okay yes great, great. yeah so soccer probably prepares you for that pretty well oh yeah definitely <laughs> especially with this new formation yeah. too like just running up and down the field I know I'm going to be ready for the 800 meter for sure <laughs> Excellent. Uh, live big weekend coming up, right? Wesley and Williams. Last year you got a win at Wesleyan. You drew with Williams. They ended up, I think, winning the national title, right? So, I mean, uh, but they're coming here this year. So what are you most working on this week in practice, you think, to prepare for these two, two teams? Um, we ended with a great note this weekend. So yeah. I think it's all about keeping our positivity high, our energy high, and I think our self-confidence. We know we're a strong team. We have a lot of depth on this team. We know we can do great things. So it's just focusing on being able to do that for the full 90 minutes, and I know we all can do that, and I know we're excited to show it this weekend. The cross-country teams welcomed Tufts to Pineland Farms last Saturday, with the men also competing against Southern Maine. Both teams are gearing up for the Maine State Championships, which take place a week from this Saturday. Senior Captain Henry Colt led the men with a second-place finish out of 50 runners. Interestingly, Colt started out Nordic skiing at Bates before joining the cross-country team last year. I was a skier uh, for two years, uh, walk on, and um, I had a total blast, but uh, I actually was skiing because part of the reason was uh, a few injuries that I had running sort of later on in high school, and I actually transferred here from Pomona, uh, so I was supposed to run there, but uh, couldn't because of these injuries, and kind of fell in with the ski team, but then once I sort of got healthy, I knew it was like, oh, I really miss running and want to get back to it, uh, and then I sort of made the transition to cross country and it's been a blast ever since so you yeah. transferred from Pomona to Bates I did yeah <laughs> tell me a little bit about that the process because okay. we don't get too many d3 and d3 <laughs> transfers here um <laughs> well geez so um transferring was kind of crazy I was actually a mid-year transfer um and uh gee I don't know uh Pomona it was an awesome place just not the right place for me and, and Bates was uh just as soon as I kind of got on campus, I knew that this was going to be, like, the place for me and the community I wanted, so, yeah. Well, because you're for, really from, what, Massachusetts? Yeah, so, really, Northeast, yeah. a little bit more familiar? Than, yeah. Exactly, yeah. I was a New England kid at the heart, so. <laughs> Excellent. And so, you transfer here mid-year, and so you immediately joined the ski team. What was that like, uh, working with the skiers coming here, you know, middle of the year? Um, it was great. Uh, I, I sort of just had no choice but to jump right in, and uh, Becky Woods really helped me out and was an awesome coach. Uh, and, you know, great leadership on the ski team back then. And, uh, yeah, it was I was learning a lot of new things, I but ran and skied in high school, but was just trying to give it, give it my all and see what happened. But. So now you're fully healthy, focusing on cross-country, second year of the cross-country team. Uh, strong finish, second place, I believe, this past Saturday. So what was the course like i know pineland farms your home course you're used to it oh it's always a huge treat to run on pineland to me that's just sort of classic new england cross country um i was uh really happy about my race really happy with the team performance it was great to kind of uh run right up there with tufts because they're supposed to be a little bit better than us i guess this year if you pay any attention to that sort of thing but um so it's great to just uh yeah run right up there with tufts and and see such strong performances out of bart and james and 
Nico and kind of everyone sort of coming together. So. Well, yeah, and also you're you're a captain. So what's what's some of those role? What's that role like for you? Oh, it's been really fun. Um, you know, uh, definitely some uh, just you know a little bit of organizational stuff, but mostly just kind of trying to do my best to get the team fired up and uh, keep people positive and excited about you know going to practice every day and and being able to get that. Uh, next level of excitement on Saturdays in the meets. Well, we talked. We talked to Coach Fresh last week on the Bobcast. He mentioned that this meet's special because you, you score at 10 deep, right? So you got a chance for younger guys to contribute too, right? Exactly, yeah. That's always a really cool thing about this meet, uh, 10 deep scoring. Unfortunately, because of that, we <laughs> did end up losing to Tufts. So if it was five deep scoring, would have nipped them. But, um, but uh, yeah, it's always really fun to score 10 deep. But the cool thing about that is, is, you know, in these coming weeks, I think we'll see some new faces sort of in our top seven and uh, new faces up front, and uh, it's sort of a constantly changing thing, and we're all pushing each other. So we got the main state championships coming up, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, I believe, there on the 29th. Uh, that's at Bowdoin. Have you run there before? Yeah, we actually ran there for states last okay. year, um, and uh, we did win, which was awesome. So we're just we're looking to go back there and hopefully do that again. So we're really excited. Yeah, when it's a state meet like that, I mean, obviously you got Bowdoin and Colby, your, your rivals, uh, you know, for every sport here at Bates. What's that? Does it make it extra special for a race, kind of? Yeah, oh, it's it's always really fun competing against those guys. You know, you definitely uh, get to know the Colby and Bowdoin guys a bit um, and, uh, you know, see, see them after the race and whatnot. But it's always a, a really fun rivalry and, like, uh, definitely we'd love to win. So we'll see. And rumor has it that there may be some other teams coming from – out of the state to sort of preview the course for regionals, but I don't know if that's true or not. So whatever it, whatever it brings, we'll just have to give it our best. Yeah, this is extra important, as you mentioned, because regionals are there, and regionals are it, the all-important one, aren't they? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is true. I know the team last year, you know, almost made nationals, right? It was very close, so how much are people, you know, motivated to, you know, take that next step, kind of? I would say incredibly motivated. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's definitely, I can speak for some of the classes that came before I me, mean, it's definitely been a long time coming for Big Sexy to get to nationals. Um, you know, obviously I think the last time we made it was 2013, but each year we've sort of had a team that's been really close but not quite done it, so hopefully this is the year we can break through. Excellent. And then, you know, we touched on the fact that you were a Norwich skier and then you, you transferred over to cross country, but that's not entirely uncommon for cross country runners to do Norwich skiing. Give us some of the similarities and differences between, I mean, obviously one's on skis and in snow, but some other similarities and differences maybe between the two events and how they kind of relate to each other almost. Yeah, so uh, it, definitely more similar than different, I would yeah. say. Um, you know, both of them obviously endurance sports. Uh, Nordic, I'd say definitely more balance and strength comes into play. Sometimes the races are a little bit longer. Uh, but one of the cool things I think that uh, helped me actually coming from Nordic was uh, there's less of a focus on time, so I didn't really... Uh, came in sort of wasn't really intimidated about like people's times or all that stuff because and, and learned to sort of run more on feel um and that was definitely a plus and you know it's definitely i miss nordic i ski a lot in the winter uh during my winter break for cross training and for fun and uh totally good friends with a lot of the guys on the nordic team still so yeah, yeah. growing up how'd you first get into running and into skiing oh uh so i had this great middle school coach dave belcher um, and uh, he, he came up for the alumni race. He graduated sometime in the 80s and ran track here. And uh, he got me into running, totally loved it when I started, loved the guys on the team. I, you know, uh, definitely was one of those middle school kids that was not getting the best grades, having a hard time focusing, and sort of running gave me something to work on every day, and that was really cool. And then Nordic, I started sophomore year of high school, um, and uh, it, we had a sort of, uh, uh, coach that was uh, sort of eccentric but in the best way and uh, I I started it and then just totally fell in love with it too so I sort of love doing all those three things. So you got a, a week plus two weeks basically prepare for the main stage what are some of you focusing on in practices and, and practice runs because you guys I know you run a lot I see you out there all the time. <laughs> uh, so, so focusing this week I think we'll probably run uh, a little bit more mileage this week and then probably back off a little bit next week as we get into the states uh, we sort of this Friday we have a Pineland workout, and uh, Pineland workouts are sort of our uh, staple workouts during the season. They're sort of our most important ones. Uh, we can compare our times of people uh, in the past, other other Bates people, so it's sort of interesting to see where our team falls uh, in that sense. And uh, so really we want to be well prepared for that. Then we've got a long run on Tuesday um, up by Coach's house, which will be fun. Those roads are always really pretty. 
and then a long run on Sunday again with some recruits who are coming up. So when you say long run, how long is that? Uh, probably about 15 miles. 15 miles, that's longer than a half marathon, folks. <laughs> well, Henry Colt, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast. Thanks so much, Aaron. Senior Katie Barker led the number 16 nationally ranked women's cross country team with a second place finish out of 39 runners. Pineland is hard as always, but we're it's our home course and we run at it a lot. We do we, um, workouts on it weekly and so we're used to it. So I think that we definitely tried to use our home field advantage. Yeah, I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And then um, were you running with anyone in particular throughout the race? Because I know it's always about run, you know, running with someone and trying to keep that pace. Yeah, yeah. Us, um, Abby, Liv, and I mm-hmm. all, like, went out together. And it was really great to use them and go off of each other and then just, like, push all of us, us three till the end. Yeah. So this is a 5K race, but uh, starting with states, it sounds like it's going to be a full 6K from now here on out, right? So mm-hmm. how does this help you prepare for maybe the longer races? I mean, we've been easing in distance-wise, um, so I guess it's nicer to get used to the competition and getting in the mindset. It will feel like a jump distance-wise, but it's just more conditioning of the brain to get more comfortable with going longer and longer distances. And this meet in particular, it was just Bates and Tufts, right? That's that's a little smaller than you're, maybe you're used to necessarily. What was that like having like, almost like a one-on-one meet? Yeah, it was, um, I don't know, I guess like, we're still easing into the season, so it's not going to be 100% realistic quite yet. But it is intense when you just see a non-Bates uniform. You know it's just you versus them. So every place really does matter that much more. Excellent. So you're a senior now. So what are some of your goals you've set maybe in your mind for this year? Um, I, I don't know about specific goals, but I guess I just really want to enjoy my year as much as possible. Stay non-injured, be able to run as much with the team as I can. I think Jay mentioned you were battling through some injuries last year. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I definitely had, like, a knee injury last year that I had to, like, work through this summer and then also for most of the season last year. But um, I think that's definitely – I'm more comfortable now with cross-training. I actually, like, enjoy it. (laughs) Don't hate it as much. So, like, even now I'm still biking and swimming a lot and enjoying running when I can on the uh, trails and spring road. Yeah. So what do you think the practice, uh, focus and practices are coming weeks going to be? Because I believe Maine State's in two weeks, correct? Yeah, so we get to have, um, like, two workouts this week, which is nice just getting to, like, put in some work and not have to worry about a race. Um, but I think we're going to Pineland, which is Hills, tomorrow, but then we're going to go back to Spring Road, which is flatter, closer to the Bowdoin course. So tell us about some of the maybe the, the, um, the first years joining the team this year, what they've been like so far. They are awesome. I actually find them to be so much fun. They make up almost the majority or almost half of our um, team, which is like a, they have a huge presence, but they're a great addition to the team. Yeah, they're a lot of fun, just a lot of new energy, and um, they're also all like really fast and like well dispersed. Like upper, our upper class can, can really work well with all the underclassmen. Yeah. Great. What are you most looking forward to maybe for the rest of the cross country season in terms of, uh, you know, events that you particularly enjoy and whatnot? Um, I, don't, I just, race days are fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for states, um, there will hopefully be a lot of like, um, support from families. We'll have a tailgate afterwards. And then if we get to travel to Wisconsin for pre-nationals in, you know, it's like four weeks, I think traveling will be an awesome experience too. Great. Katie Barker, thanks so much. Thank you. The tennis teams have begun their fall season, with the men competing at the Middlebury Invitational over the weekend and the women hosting the Wallach Invitational this Saturday and Sunday. At the Middlebury Invitational, first year Alex Wernick advanced to the finals of the A singles flight and senior captain Josh Keanu teamed with junior Nick Glover to advance to the finals of the A doubles flight. Head coach Paul Gassingay looks back on the Middlebury Invitational and forward to this weekend. Yeah, I got up to... Close to 90 degrees on Saturday and Sunday. It's always nice when it starts cool in the morning, but that lasted for about 20 minutes. Uh, it was a it was a really hot day. Um, I think probably over 20 cases of athletes cramping and uh, either having to retire or uh, just be, you know, in pretty deep trouble. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a battle of attrition. It sounds like basically. Yeah. To play this type of event, you have to be super fit, but you also have to be used to the conditions. And, you know, a couple of our kids are from warm weather places, 
However, the last few weeks on campus, it's it's been reasonably comfortable. So, um, yeah, a lot of the kids had issues. For Bates, he had a first-year advance to the A-Flight Finals. Uh, tell us about him, Alex Werner. Alex is a phenomenal athlete, uh, just a uh, really good physical uh, athlete, very good mental game. Uh, he competes really hard. He's got pretty much every shot in the game. So it's fun to coach uh, guys like that because they can do what you ask them to do right away. And he listens. He's very coachable. So um, he's going to have a bright future with us. And then Josh and Nick, these two guys have teamed up before in the fall and done well. It seems like they're doing it again, aren't they? Yeah, it was a couple of years ago we paired them yeah. together, and uh, they had a, a really good run through the draw as well um, with uh, Josh Liner graduating. And, you know, uh, Q, as we call him, has been playing with Liner for the last three years. And so, you know, we have a, three juniors abroad uh, this fall. So we have, you know... New kids in the mix, three first years, and, and so we have to just figure out what we're going to do with doubles. But we knew that could, you know, sort of uh, catch lightning in a bottle there, and, and uh, they did a great job. So singles to the A-flight finals and doubles as well. When's the last time that happened, do you know? It's been a long time. It's such a tough draw, and people look at it as a tune-up tournament. But when you've got Middlebury, who's really loaded national champs from last year, um it's amazing. You look at the draw, you know, it's A, B, C, D draws, you know, so one through eight players on a team. And honestly, you know, the A, B, and C draws are interchangeable. There's so much depth. I mean, the the, the depth of the, of the level is incredible at this point. And, you know, we'll see those same players in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, Skidmore is there as well. Uh, Brandeis has a very strong team. And Colby's got some good players. And, you know, so it's a, a mix uh, from outside our conference, but it, it gets us tuned up for the ITA championships, which are at uh, Middlebury again in a couple weeks. Gotcha. Hopefully a little bit better weather or a little more comfortable weather. <laughs> I mean, I think our guys like the heat. Uh -huh. I think it was just a shock yeah. uh, for everyone. Yeah. Um, this weekend, Wallach Invitational um, for the women. This is the second year you've done this, right? Yes. For women only, Wallach Invitational. And so how'd it go last year, and what are you looking to see from the team this year? Well, it was a huge success last year. It, it gives us an opportunity to try out diff different doubles pairings against other teams. So uh, this year we're doing a little bit differently. We're running uh, a compass draw on each day, and the compass draw on Saturday could be different than on Sunday, you can set up different teams, and so it'll give us a chance to kind of play through the draw with a, a set pairings and see how they do against other teams, and then maybe you know change it on Sunday. Obviously, last year for the women's team, the headliner was Maisie Silverman. She's graduated. So, who are some of the returnees who you're excited to see this fall? Really excited about our entire team. Um, you know, we have uh, a few seniors um, and. You know, Bella Stone's been, you know, just a huge part of our top of our lineup. Last year she had a sh uh, shoulder surgery the week after the season. So she was kind of uh, struggling through that all, all year last year, serving underhanded or not playing some matches just to manage it. Um, and we've got Hannah Londoner and Morgan Woods, uh, the other seniors. But we've got uh, Lauren Hernandez, who's a, a junior who uh, was supposed to be abroad, decided to stay on campus. Uh, can't say I'm disappointed. Uh, it's always great to have her around. She's a great competitor and a uh, great team leader as well. Um, and we've got uh, Isabel Ravinsky abroad and Suzanne Elfman abroad as well. So Hannah Sweeney is returning. She was uh, playing as high as one for us last year in certain matches, top two uh, for a chunk of the year. She's just a phenomenal competitor. Had a great ITA summer championship uh this summer where she beat a couple of D1 girls and lost in the final. So we're really excited to have her back. And uh, our incoming class was super strong. Uh, Anna Rosen from Toronto, uh, outstanding player, all-court game. Um, we have Sydney Burns, uh, again, all-court player, uh, just really good athlete. And we have Haley Naiman, um, who is also just a, a quick study and, and really picking up uh, 
really quickly and, and uh, improving every day. So we, we three great additions. Um, our sophomore class is strong as well. Um, Haley Washington came back. She worked really hard over the summer. Looks really, really strong. And, um, yeah, so we're really excited for the fall. Warnick and Glover joined the Bobcast to reflect on the men's tennis team's opening weekend. Well, a big week for the men's tennis team at the Middlebury Invitational start of the fall season. We got Nick Glover here along with Alex Wernick. And we'll start with the singles the first year. Alex, you advanced to the finals of the A slate there at the Middlebury Invitational. What was that experience like? I understand it was very hot, but besides that, perhaps. Yeah, the conditions <laughs> were pretty tough. A lot of people were cramping, but I thought I just competed well and the team was awesome cheering me on. Um, it gave me a lot of energy to keep going and found a way to win. Yeah, as a first year, what was that experience like? Just, you know, your first you know weekend of college tennis? Kinda. It was pretty special. I mean, it's definitely different from junior tennis. And it's a, it's a lot more fun having a bunch of guys that you're really close with cheering you on. And it's, it's definitely a fun, fun moment. And then Nick, you and Q yes. advanced to the finals of the A slate of the of the doubles bracket. There, you you and Josh have pretty good chemistry. You did this a couple of years ago too, right? Yeah, we did it um, when I was a freshman. We got to the it was the same turn. We got to the yeah. finals there as well. And then yeah, so we've played together for a few years now. It's pretty good. Yeah, last year we didn't do too well. I wasn't playing my best, but then this year I kind of got my confidence back, so I'm feeling better. And yeah, we did really good this weekend. It was kind of unfortunate in the finals. I was. As you mentioned, the hot conditions, I cramped in the finals, so we had to pull out, but it was a good weekend overall. Yeah, and obviously you tried to play through it, but it's yeah. just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a junior, what adjustments have you made, you know, over the past couple of years? I mean, I was, it's, it takes a lot of adjustment. Like, freshman year, I kind of came in, like, the whole summer. I was playing tournaments, so I was in really good shape, and I was playing really well. And then having to adjust, being from Texas, to playing, like, indoors huge difference in, in like the tennis and doing everything so my form kind of dipped a little bit and as like my ability kind of dipped my confidence kind of went so it took like a year or two to kind of like get back and like also balance it with like school too that's also the hardest part of it all but yeah so I think I finally got it which is good yeah how are you finding the balance between school and tennis so far uh it's been okay I mean <laughs> this week and I I have a lot of work to do so <laughs> other than that it's been okay so <laughs> I'm curious, Alex, what about Bates Appeal do you, what made you decide to come here for, for school? Um, well, I love the team. When I took my official visit here, I was I stayed with Nick, um, and I had a lot of fun with him, and I loved Coach. He, uh, he really spoke well, and his message resonated with me, so I really liked him. Yep. Nick, I'm curious, what was it like watching this guy go through the singles bracket like that? Oh, it was awesome. I was loving it. He's a, a great competitor, very confident player. I loved watching it. He's going to be really good on uh, the season for us, absolutely. Terrific. And then, obviously, ITA is coming up in a little bit, right? What are some yes. focuses and practice maybe coming up here? Yeah, we have ITAs in two weeks at Middlebury again. Mm -hmm. um, I think only it's only, like, two singles players get nominated in two doubles teams. Okay. So, yeah, I believe me and Q will get in there. We're in it for singles as well, which would be great, but, yeah. And then how about some other players on the team? Who else stood out this weekend to you? Everyone played pretty well. Josh Kihano did really good. He was unfortunate in singles. He had to cramp first round um, in, like, a long three-set match. Alex Kennedy did really good. I give him a little shout-out. <laughs> he did very good. And, yeah, yeah, we all fought very hard this weekend. Exactly. When, is, when it's really hot conditions like that, what are some things you are doing to, like, you know, stay hydrated and make sure you're not – trying not to cramp up? Uh, I just take my time between points, walk really slow, and just breathe. I mean, fitness-wise, I think I'm in better shape than almost everyone I'll play, so I wasn't really worried about cramping or anything, just outlasting everyone. So, yeah. What's your background? When do you start playing tennis? Uh, well, I actually just started playing tennis more than once a week two and a half years ago. Um, I came back from boarding school to day school because I wanted to play college tennis, so I'm kind of new to this, but... Um, it's been taking off pretty fast, so, yeah. Terrific. Now, you, you mentioned you're from Texas. Yes. Um, so, was this worse heat than you experienced in Texas? <laughs> Definitely not. Like, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, even in the summer, like, Texas days are always, like, over 100. Yeah. And I'd, like, play in, like, the heat, like, all through the summer. But yeah. I don't know. I guess, like, being at base for, like, a couple weeks, the first weeks to, st to start the school, like, it was kind of chilly some days. It was, like, in the 60s, mm -hmm. like, some days. Yeah. And then, like playing like matches in Middlebury it was like almost like 90 degrees probably like 95 degrees on court 
so that always takes toll. And just the intensity of matches as well makes you stress a little more. <laughs> Great. And Alex, I'm curious about, you know, Paul Gassengay, the head coach here. What, what has he been working with you on so far? Uh, just competing and shaping the ball and just being a tough person to, to beat and not beating myself. Um, just, yeah. What's he like personality-wise? Uh, he's pretty patient. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not an easy guy to work with, so he's, he's very patient, yeah. And Nick, what have you been working on with Coach? Um, I've been working on, like, the same kind of things, like shape of the ball. Like, as, like, a freshman and junior, like, me and Coach butted heads a lot. I was, I was very immature. I wouldn't really listen to him. And, like, he, he would tell you that, too. And so, like, this year I'm, like, I'm, like, finally, like, maturing. I'm, like, listening more. And it's paying off for sure. Excellent. Well, any other thoughts on, you know, the first weekend and what you're most looking forward to maybe the rest of this fall? I mean, I'm pretty pumped for ITAs, get get another shot at maybe the guy that I lost to, and then, uh, I mean, yeah, just continuing to improve. Excellent. Well, Alex Wernick and Nick Glover, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. The golf teams competed at the main state championships over the weekend, with both teams finishing in third place. The men finished third out of 10 teams, led by sophomore Julian Lewin, who tied for 12th place out of 55 players. We got a trio of men's golfers joining us here on the Bobcast. Our two captains, Liam McLaughlin and Andrew Garcia Bow, as well as our low scorer from the past weekend, the Main State Championships, Julian Lewin. And Julian, I'll start with you. Uh, you went out there, got tied for 12th. The team finished third out of 10. Were you fairly satisfied with the weekend? Uh, I felt pretty satisfied. It was good to kick off the year with a few good rounds. And after practicing with my coach this summer, I was really happy with my results. And while stuff could have gone better, I'm optimistic for future rounds. And Andrew, tell us a little bit about the course and how it played and what adjustments the team maybe made day one to day two. Yeah, so the first day, it was a good day for us still, but we knew that going into the second day that we could take what we learned from the first day, which was like green speeds and kind of where to keep the ball in play and what not to do and kind of adjust from there. And everyone on the team did actually get to make those adjustments, which was really good, even though some scores differed because, you know, it was a different day, different conditions. But um, we were still able to adjust what we needed to, which was a really good thing. Now, Liam, you weren't involved with this tournament, but you are very busy right now applying for a Fulbright understand. So how's that process going? It's been going well. I was a little bit late on the game. I found out about a week into school that uh, it was going to be due sooner than I had thought. So... A little late in the game, but I've caught up, and uh, I have a little mock interview next week. So, so you're gonna be able to get back to golfing pretty soon. Or? Yeah, it's it's been a shame. I would have liked to have played uh, in both of the tournaments already, but um, hopefully there'll be room for me in the coming coming season. Julian, I know. I mean, within the team, there's there's competition to even be able to go play at these tournaments, right? What's that dynamic like? Certainly, it's. Definitely difficult given how many good players there are on the team and being able to choose who's going to be on the top roster of five players for each weekend, each weekend. But I think that it's good that each practice we sort of go to the range, we putt, and we eventually play nine holes to determine who's on top that week. And so I think that's a pretty fair judgment of who plays. And um, I'm pretty eager to see Liam come back, and I'm excited to play with him. Excellent. Uh, Andrew, obviously, you know, Julian, the low scorer over the weekend for the team. What do you notice about him and his game the last couple of years? Um, I think the biggest gain in his game that I've seen is his mental game. I think he's definitely been able to stay calm through a lot of shots and some hard moments, and I've seen him get frustrated but be able to reset himself, and I think that's something that the whole team has definitely worked on over time, just being able to mentally stay there and not lose themselves and get lost in any bad shots. What's it like for you, Liam, to be a captain with Andrew this season? Um, Andrew's been great. He's been keeping uh, track of the guys, and uh, we're trying to get into some team workouts to build a little camaraderie. So um, that's been good for us. Yeah, you guys practice over there at Martindale with Nick Glicos and the staff there. What's Nick been like as a coach, you know, helping you guys, you know, refine your game? This season, we've worked more specifically with Harry, who's okay. a PGA professional. Okay. We haven't seen Nick too much. He's very busy with events going on there, but. Gotcha. Harry's been a great resource. We've been able to work more on the technical side of our swing, which hasn't been dealt with so much in the past, but I believe has um, been a target as to why we've played so well in these past two tournaments. And I'm really, really eager to work with him in the coming weeks with putting and sort of our mental game, too, to prepare for the NASCAR qualifiers and other tournaments. 
Gotcha, and you got the UMF Invitational coming up, a one-day event. I know you've been in that before. What's that event like? Well, the one-day event is a little different because you only have one shot to kind of put your best score in. You can't adjust for a second day and change and kind of adapt to the course. So it's kind of preview. A lot of it does come with research beforehand, seeing what you can learn about the course before playing it, trying to remember what holes are like, and playing a little bit more reserved and not taking anything too risky. And that's the last tournament before the NESCAC Fall Qualifier, is that right? That's right. The NESCAC Fall Qualifier is pretty intense, isn't it? I always enjoy it. It's my favorite event. Oh, yeah? It's the biggest event we have. Um, played well two years ago at it. Um, unfortunately, didn't play last year, but I'm looking forward to hopefully playing this year and giving it one last good shot as a senior. Yeah, how's the NESCAC Fall Qualifier maybe a little bit different from other events for you? Um, I think that there's definitely more pressure in terms of your performance and what could come out of that. And I've only played this past year, my sophomore year, and that was definitely a difficult round, a new course that we weren't able to experience beforehand. And the first round was difficult because the conditions were very subpar, um, but it, it helped us see the first round and you know prepare for the second one. And I'm excited to see what the course is this year. I'm not sure if it's the same one, but um, I guess it is, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. And then, Andrew, uh, I understand that there are some events in the spring as well that you're going to be playing in again, right? Yeah, so the spring season last year was the first time we actually yeah. had one, and it's short. It was only two matches, but they're still fun, and it's still good to kind of bring the team back together after a long, long winter and play the sport that we love. And this year we're actually working on having some kind of spring trip and kind of to build something ahead of time and just put the team back on the track after a long winter. Sounds good. Well, Julian Lewin, Andrew garcia Bow, Liam McLaughlin, thanks so much for joining us. The men's golf team at Bates, third out of ten at the Maine State Championships over the weekend. Thanks again. It was a tough week for the Bates field hockey team as the Bobcats fell by a 4-2 score to both Bowden and Tufts, squads ranked 10th and 8th in the country, respectively. However, the Bobcats get a chance to bounce back right away when they visit Thomas College this Wednesday for a match that gets underway at 7.30 p.m. That's the only midweek contest before all the Bates fall sports compete in another action-packed weekend. Visit GoBatesBobcats.com for the complete schedule, and we will recap it all next time on the Bates Bobcast. Bates, Bates, my